Hey everybody, this is Rob Shack. So we are going to be doing the Corvette C5R in my Like the Wind race. I'm also going to do another race with this today on the Laguna Seca one, maybe. I think so. <laughs> anyway, y'all are great. Thanks for watching and enjoy. Oh, alrighty everybody. So this was a really funny race. Trying to stay tuned to the end if you want, or just click to the end because this one is very bizarre. Um, okay, Ugh, where to even begin? So, I decided to use, obviously, the Corvette C5R 2000. Great car. Um, I really enjoyed using it. It's really fast. Um, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Okay, so I just finished it. That's why I'm still reacting like this because, I mean, this is the replay directly off of me doing this race. So, okay, my mission this race, I was like, here we go. We're going to help the Viper. We're going to push the Viper to victory. We're just going to streamline him. So I set the gear ratio as wide as possible. All the way up to, I think, with this car, it was 48. And I went, all right, we're going to just draft him. I'm going to get to my max speed so that I can push him. I didn't even, and I should have done this, but I didn't. I didn't even test how, what my car's top speed will be. I didn't even check. I should have. But then I realized how hilarious this race was becoming. So then I was just like, well, we've already done it. So I'll go ahead and upload it for y'all. <laughs> so I'm pushing the Viper. GT1 got a massive lead because he started in first. Zonda sucks. Esprit is not much better. And then the Speed 12 is the most random top speeded car in this race compared to everyone else. So, I start pushing the Viper. I keep doing this until he has to pit. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to begin to describe this. So, I will just kind of say thank you and stuff like that as the video continues, and then we'll just get to it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for checking out the channel. I always want to say that because it's cool to see that y'all like this stuff that I do. That means a lot. I really, really appreciate that. Um, it's been a, really an honor to play this game with y'all. It's fun a lot. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So, thank you guys. So, let me know in the comments what other um, cars you want to see for the Like the Wind race. I've done a couple of, like, subscriber requests, but I'll, I plan on doing, like, almost every car that I can that's, like, realistic. Obviously, some cars will never win this race unless you don't play with the Viper. Uh, but the Viper is so much more fun. So, yeah, let me know what y'all want to see. Um, okay, so back to the race. So I've now... I'm just pushing the Viper. I'm like, okay, we passed the GT1, but who cares because I know the Viper is going to need to pit way sooner. I was like, we'll cushion his lead, continue to give him boosts, at this point, I still have no idea how fast my car can actually go. I've never even done a max speed test of this car, except for when I did it untuned. I did not know anything about this car. So I slowed down there just to keep the Viper in front of me. That wasn't like how drastically my car decreases its acceleration after I'm out of draft. That was just me giving the Viper room so I could keep pushing him. Because we're getting really far ahead of the GT1, and that's the goal. Um, he's a little crazy when I try to... If I get too close to one of his sides, he either moves inward or outward. He, like, responds, which is nice. But I was like, dude, just stay in the middle. Let me give you the most amount of speed I can. GT1 is now six seconds behind. He's doing a 138, and we just did a 132. So we've I'm giving him a pretty huge lead, which I really enjoyed. Because I was like, okay, we're gonna, this is going to be the race. We're going to do this. We're going to get the GT1 to lose to the Viper. I've never actually gotten the GT1 to lose to the Viper. At least, maybe. Maybe I have. I don't think I actually have ever. Because the Viper pits so many more times. You basically have to, like, either push him forward constantly or mess up the GT1. So I tried to do both. And I was like, that, the, this is going to be the race. This is going to be the one where I actually get it to work. So we're approaching the Zonda. And I was like, well... I had a lot of ideas in my head here. I was like, either we're going to push him, I'm just going to push the Viper beyond the, Vi the Zonda, or, and I thought this at the last second, just push him out of the way. But then he didn't listen to me, went flying back into the lane and slams the Zonda. Zonda goes flying ahead of the GTS, and I was like, all right, forget it, man. 
I'm gonna let you catch up to me because at this point I realized my car kind of sucks. I put the gear ratios way, way too wide and the car is in a low sixth gear, but he's not even accelerating quickly anymore. But GT1 slams into the Zonda. And I think the GT1 actually does it worse because of the fact that the GT1 hit him on a corner. When he hits him on the corner, he just sits behind him as opposed to with the Viper where we just launched the Zonda way ahead. So the Viper has repassed me. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm like, my car kind of sucks. I did not realize how bad my car was going to be in this race. But it's pretty bad, so I will have to redo this race at some point with the better version of the C5R's gears because I can assume this car could probably... I mean, this car is over 1,000 horsepower. It should not be maxing out at 228, you know? So here I just decide I'm just going to push the Viper. I was hoping to give... That was supposed to go a little bit easier, but the Viper just loves to stay behind all the slow cars for some reason. So I um, just was like, I'll just push... I'll just slow down with him so that he'll catch up to me faster so that we can then go back into me drafting him and giving him massive boost of speed because he needs it because the GT1 like never pits. Viper always pits. It's really stupid. So, but I love it because the Viper, it makes the race way more interesting if the Viper pits a lot because you can do way more fun stuff. So, he nails the spree. Let's see how fast he's breaking. He breaks 200 for a second, probably. Not actually, I didn't see it, but probably. So now I'm back to give me the Viper boost of speed. Um, I'll just see. I'll wait for the... I don't remember myself what the GT1 speed was and how far behind he was from me when, at this point. So the Viper goes into the pit and I was like, alright, I'll see you later, dude. He's very quick. He goes ahead and goes right into the pit. I want to see how far ahead we were from the GT1. This is about, whatever this is going to be, it's about what we were. So he was about 12 seconds probably, I was probably 12 seconds ahead of him. Now it's dropping. It's dropping a lot. And so I was like, okay, well, my goal was still to help the Viper. I didn't go in the pit with him because, well, he takes forever to accelerate. And I probably should have gone there with him in retrospect. But I didn't. So I ended up staying in the front. And the GT1 slowly catches up to me. Uh, I'm trying to think if I should just edit this part now. Well, I'll just keep talking. So the speed 12 is... Does about a little bit lower. He does a 149. That's not terrible. Um, that's also including that he hit the Zonda that course, that turn. So you can see that the GT1 catches up to me extremely fast. Like, I mean, he's going 243, I think, by the end of the straightaway. And I go 228. So I realize, I'm realizing, like, well, this is going to be... a uh, troublesome race and it ended up yeah I'll just not say anything yet about that so I do want to do this race with the GT1 at some point I haven't done that yet or the um, R390 because I love the R390 but I never really use it because it's so good it's like not even fair to use that car in this game so whew, excuse me yawning my plan is to use a lot of the like best race cars I still want to use the Denso Sarge Supra in this race as well. I've done the Castro Toms, but I haven't done the Denso Sard. So that's another part of my plan. Um, yeah. So I let's see what I should do here. Okay, so I'll just actually we'll just keep it going. So Speed twelve nails the Esprit. It's crazy that the Esprit is in fifth and the Speed Twelve is in fourth. Like Speed 12 is such a fast car in retrospect, but there's just nobody in this race that normally is racing against the Speed 12. He usually has a lot more competition than he does, but in this race, it's weird, and it's just him. He's kind of alone. Yeah, so my car kind of sucks. Like, look at this. I mean, I didn't turn well that turn, but I'm like, I jumped on the 214, accelerated up to about 228. I'm like, this is bad. This is bad news. My car is not nearly as fast as I was hoping it was going to be. So I end up doing this, pushing the Zod. I don't push the Zod, but I... <laughs> I just 
let the GT1 hit him. It's amazing to see the Zonda go that fast. This race is so fun because the AI is so predictable. They just slam into the other cars. It's amazing how much faster he can get than me too, because he's already going faster than me, and he was barely on the corner, and he'd already hit the Zonda. So this is, yeah, we were we were in a weird pickle here. So I don't want to spoil this race right now. So I'm just going to keep bouncing around that question of how what the heck happens, because a lot of weird stuff happens in this race by the end. And I wasn't expecting it to be weird at the end. I thought it was just going to be a normal race. And then you will see. Um, at this point now, the GT1 is totally catching up to me and it's passing, about to pass me. But then I got the idea. I was like, well, actually, if I keep making him uh, hit his max speed, he doesn't gain on me as quickly. So then I got that idea. And I was like, this actually can help the GTS to hopefully beat the GT1 because... GT1 is now going into this turn slower than he would have had he just gone at his normal 243. He didn't get that opportunity, so I was like, well, this could be our opportunity to make it where the Viper can win against GT1. So I just went, all right, let's keep trying to do it. So I keep getting in front of him, although he I ended up helping him there by accident. I was trying to get him to reach his top speed, but then I didn't. So then I, I also wanted to stay with him in case I don't want to lose my place battling with the GT1 so then I just get slightly into his draft and then I end up making him hit his top speed a bunch so I'm going at this point 240 239 slowly slowing down a lot but the GT1 was not catching up to me because of the fact that he was in my draft and his top speed is like one mile above whatever he needs to hit there GTS is still chilling still in third coming and getting closer and closer to us GT1 is, I think he's about to go into the pit. I can't remember. I actually don't think he does. Here. Yeah, he doesn't go in the pit here. Okay. So I go ahead and get in front of him so that he just immediately hits his top speed. I'm going 232. Um, and I'm just trying, all, so the whole thing I'm trying to do is just help the Viper to win. It's all I'm trying to do because I don't think I've ever seen the Viper actually win. And I was like, this is our time. I actually make the Esprit curve back into the front of the GT1, so the GT1 ends up ends up actually going much slower because he gets caught behind the Esprit for a second, a little bit longer than he would have been normally. So I liked that. I was like, okay, we're we're making progress here. We're trying to get the the Viper to finally beat the GT1. Uh, I just want to show that because it's funny. Speed 12 is. Such a good looking car though. Uh, okay, so the Viper is coming up on the Esprit now. Yeah, that's the Esprit. So I'll just showcase this because this is hilarious that he just hits him. Esprit goes into that corner going over 200 miles an hour, or leaves that straight away doing that. Still trying to mess with the GT1, just trying to get him to lose his top, lose his speed a little bit, just so that the Viper can catch up. I mean, I, th I figured every second was going to count in this race, and yeah, y'all see. Y'all will see. Um, or you already have seen by this point. You're just, you cut to the end. That's fine. Do whatever you want. So, I'm still trying to mess with the GT1 a little bit. Um, trying to keep him near me. I see that he's about to head into the pit, so I was like, alright, you do that. I'll just keep going straight. By this point, I really need to pit, but I was like, I've already started this I realized that it was going to become really difficult for me to, like, not pit, or to be able to pit on this race. It was going to become very difficult, so I was like, I don't think I'm going to pit, especially because I knew I needed the lead, needed to keep the lead for the, so if I could help the Viper. If I pitted, he would just be in front of me right now, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't be any special. So I was hoping that I could get him to catch up to me, but I wasn't even trying because my car doesn't go that fast so it was my mistake um yeah so gt1 is now back in third speed 12 is on his own still he's just random um so here i get here i am i just draft a little bit on the zonda just to get me up a little bit higher my to my speed 
Because this car, if the straightaway was long enough, this car would actually go up to probably 233. But it's not worth it. And it also never happens in this one. So I just need to change his gear ratio. Zonda gets hit, is going so fast. So that was pretty freaking terrible for the Viper. GT1 is still coming up behind. Speed 12 just pitted. Speed 12 has such crazy fast acceleration, it's unbelievable. Let's just go watch this. So fast. Anyway, so on to me. I'm there. About to lap the speed 12. Viper is going into the pit. GT1 is hitting the Zonda. Glad that happens because the Viper did a terrible turn against the Zonda. Um, okay, so we're to the point now where I'm like, okay, it's sort of stabilizing. GT1 is back in front of the GTS. GTS was pitted though, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm annoyed that the Zonda repasses the GTS because that means the GTS is going to end up re hitting the Zonda again. So I was like, this is annoying. But I still think, I was like, we're still in a pretty good spot. GT1 is going to end up catching up to me, of course, because I'm only going, you know, 213 on the end of a straightaway, on the end of a corner, up to about 228 on the straightaway. He's going 232, maybe 231 by the end of a turn, and he gets up to like 245. Two. So I'm like, dude, you're good. So he's better than me in a lot of ways right now. Um, so we're going to see what happens. GTS has... Oh, he already passed the Zonda, but it made him even slower, which is really annoying, but it's fine. And GTS is going. So he gets the GT1 is at 242 at the end of the straightaway. Because he hit the Zonda, the GTS is going to be even slower. And his top speed is going to be down to, or up to about, I'm going to say 250? Yeah, right at 250. Nice. So, let's see. Everybody else. So, Spree's there. Speed 12's coming up on that guy. I think I'm the closest car to the Speed 12. I am. Yeah, so I definitely learned not to do it this way. But yeah, once the race became hilarious, I was like, all right, we'll just make it happen. Because the goal was to have the Viper beat the GT1. And I was like, if I'm trying to make the Viper beat the GT1, it doesn't really matter what my gears are because I'm just going to be drafting on the Viper as long as possible. But apparently with this race car, you can have some problems with top speed if you don't properly do your gears, which I did not. So... I will actually help, I will make the gears better and I'll do this race again later or I'll do something with the C5R. Actually, I do want to do the Laguna Seca race with this car, but yeah, it's pretty funny that that happened that way, so um, yeah, at this point, GT1 is gaining on me very quickly, he's only 8 seconds in front, or behind me. I'm gaining on the speed 12 very slowly because he's going just a barely slower than me because of how my car ends up like he's still hitting his top speed but I have never hit my top speed with this car yet I will have to modify that um yeah so here comes the speed 12 on the Zonda so I'll, or the Esprit sorry so I'm just kind of get some artsy shots of the Esprit as he goes really slow B12 is coming up on the spree. It's him pretty good, not crazy. The spree, the speed 12 isn't going as fast as the Zonda, or sorry, as the Viper and the GT1. They both are going significantly faster than the GT. Uh, sorry, than the speed 12. So, he saw me for a second there. I'm just coming into sight on the GT1, but the GT1 is going to hit. Oh, wow, that's actually a really good turn. Usually he stays behind the cars he laps. 
he did not do that that time. We'll just do this because this is kind of funny. So, he's on to, it looks like he's leading the pack right now. He is, technically, but it's because he's laps behind, which is really funny. So, here comes the speed 12. He hits him. Flies by. Here I come. I don't hit him because I am nervous about my situation here. Here comes the GT1. Slams into him. And now the Viper is about to hit the Esprit. Viper is just wasting his time. So I have just now passed the speed 12. The GT1 has not yet passed the speed 12. Viper is still looking through all the people he has to slam into. He's missing. He hasn't hit the Zonda yet. Hit the Esprit. So weird they break on the straight on the turns. You think they wouldn't, but they don't, or they do. I don't know why they do that. So here comes the speed 12. Pass about to pass this. Oh, sorry, the GT1 is about to pass the speed 12. He just does. GTS. I'm like, okay, dude, you just wasted your time hitting the back of two very slow cars. Let's see how you end up doing here. The GT1 is right behind me now, so I'm like. We're to the point now where I'm nervous because I'm like, I know this GT1 doesn't need to pit for a while. Because I was like, he just pitted on like the seventh lap, so he's probably still got a couple more laps in him. So he ends up kind of bumping me there. I get in his way though, so it's my fault. But it was fun. Um, so he passes me. I start drafting on him. And then I was like, well, then the next thought that caught into my mind was, Maybe I can glitch him into a wall, and then that can help the Viper to win. Because I've never glitched the GT1 into the wall. I've only glitched the Viper into the wall. So I was like, maybe I can do that. I don't mean, well, the Esprit is about to lap the Zonda, which is kind of hilarious. The Battle of the Slowpokes. Cool. So I haven't started doing this yet, but I did think of the idea of how about, what if I actually mess with the GT1, could I potentially get the GT1 to set that, to get stuck in a wall, and I, I hadn't figured it out yet, but I was like, I could maybe make this work, um, I want to get in front of him just to get into max speed, because I still, up until, I knew this was effective, slightly, was just stopping him by making him to the top speed, um, so I get him a little bit there, he glitches on the wall, just so for a second. Not enough to really make a big difference, but I did get him stuck in the wall for a second. Spree and Zonda are still together, which is kind of funny. So, GT1 is messing with me, and I'm trying to mess with the GT1. I want to pass him and beat him. I don't want him to, obviously, win this race. I'm committed. I'm 14 laps in, and I don't want to lose. So... Way about 244. He hits the top speed, so then I feel like I can actually gain on him a little bit, which I do, sort of. I mean,
So here's the part that's so weird. I don't know what happens here. The GT1 misses the pit completely. I don't know why. And if any of y'all know why, please let me know. Because I have no idea why he doesn't pit. He goes in the pit. He breaks with plenty of time, I think. And then he doesn't pit. At this point, I was looking in the race, and I was like, okay, I don't think he just pitted because he's only like 12 seconds behind me. There's no way he didn't just make it into the pit. And I was really nervous because I was like, it's still, there's still so much time left. So if he did just pit, then I'm like, we're going to be battling for the whole rest of the race. It's going to be really stressful. But then I, so I didn't understand that he missed it. So I was like, at this point, I'm thinking, there's no way, but I didn't know for sure. And so, as I was in this point of the race, my thoughts were just like, I'm totally gonna lose this race because the GT1 made it. He must have hit it already. So there he goes. He goes and he actually pits. So I guess I don't know what happened there. I had I was became very excited when I knew that he actually did it pit. I was like, okay, we're totally good. And then I also was super excited because I was thinking the Viper for sure is gonna win now. He's totally got it. There's no way he's not gonna win this race because the Viper is really close to the GT1, and I've never seen the GT1 do that before. Yeah, seriously. If any of y'all know what happened. Please let me know, because I don't know, I've never seen the GT1 not make it into the pit before. That was by far the strangest thing I've ever seen. So, at this point I was like, I could pit, I don't want to, and I'm glad I didn't because it ended up being way closer than I would have wanted to. So, this is the point where, that was the, that was the height of the weird things that happened this race, where the... GT1 just like for some inexcusable reason did not actually go into the pit when he went into that lap. I don't know what was going on with him. Don't know if that was just like a weird glitch with him because like he usually doesn't make any mistakes so I was very confused to see that. Um, he's passing the GT or the speed 12 so where does the speed 12 be? On his own lap literally. There's nobody else even on the same lap as him. 